Why, happy, happy Wednesday. It is the fourth day of January. The new session of the house is has taken over. And the GOP speaker of the house, still no one's got the votes. So we're going to go down a few stories here. Leading up to some some things. I'm going to paint a story. I'm going to have multiple sources. That's right, you know, I got multiple sources for the story. Because this story is really humongous. Now, it's interesting that the Democrats on day one had a Speaker of the House. Whereas it's now, what, the second day? And the GOP can't unite against one person? Say what you want about the Democrats and how evil they are. At least they could unite publicly. So we got Dan Crenshaw... Mr. Red Flag himself, anti-McCarthy Republicans, enemies in theory interviews. Um, I think you're an enemy of the state. I mean, I know you served our country with being a Navy SEAL. You lost your the side of your eye, maybe your eye in service. But you're a war hawk. You're a John McCain Jr. You're a Mitch McConnell or whatever you want to call it. Now I get we need a strong military. I understand that we need to be ready to, to fight battles at any moment. But at the same time, we should be calling for peace. We shouldn't be war hawks getting, getting in other people's business. Unfortunately, he is from Texas. Rep. Dan Crenshaw, Republican Texas, vented about the GOP enemies against Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House in a Fury interview on Tuesday. Gotta be careful when you call someone an enemy, you distance them yourself from them, and they are less likely to, to work with you. They're enemies now, he told CNN. Mahu Raju, they made it clear that they prefer Democrat agenda over a Republican one. No, they don't want a uniparty. What they have right now is a uniparty, which you have the establishment of Democrats, they're lifelong politicians, lifelong Republican politicians and they want to stay in power they want to keep that power and there's 19 to 20 republicans that are tired of it they want a change they want a pivot in the gop and this is their time that they're going to use to make that pivot but to call them enemies um they're just not the uniparty they're not war hawks. they're not globalists like you are dan control a small, crucial <laughs> group of conservatives are not backing McCarthy for House Speaker, leaving who, leaving who <laughs> will hold the gravel in doubt. That's right. The handful of members are very clearly looking for notoriety over principle, Crenshaw said. That's why there's anyone who's suggesting differently is some sort of make-believe fancy reality. Crenshaw said that you're part of the team, you hash this stuff out, and then you move on, unless you're a narcissist. I mean, it kind of takes one to know one. You're a narcissist if you believe that your opinion is so much more important than everyone else, and you keep going, and you threaten to tear down that team for the benefits of the Democrats. Just because your own sense of self-importance is exactly just what happened here. In an interview Tuesday, Fox and friend Crenshaw saw the goals of the caucus not supporting McCarthy, were very unclear and called them fake white knights who are trying to get more airtime, also called them petty, and urged them to make their difference. This is with McCarthy about policies, not personal vendettas. Maybe if he didn't shove through the ominous bill at the very last minute, and if he didn't vote on it, they would have different opinions. He voted for the uh, ominous bill, which is $1.7 trillion, and none of it is going to help American people. I mean, a good portion of this can help American people. More like union jobs are going to rob the funds while they build a bridge for over the pricing, over the cost of materials, like way over the cost of materials. I know the project here in I-35 is going to be a tune of $4 billion, or just north of $4 billion, for eight miles of road. Now, I don't know if that's comparable to other places there's going to be a lot of um, robbery literally highway robbery when it comes to rebuilding these highways let's see here you make us look foolish 
And if you didn't know any better, it's like the Democrats pay these people off. Yeah, I'm not going to continue with this. Um, he's a he's a fool. Um, of course, you got the person that should be Speaker of the House. I'm just going to play a few moments of this. Here, let me go get my headset on. Now, this is Jim Jordan. Congress. Three fundamental things we have to get done in the 118th Congress. First, pass the bills that fix the problems. In two years' time, we have, went, we, we have a border that is no longer a border. We have a military that can't meet its recruitment goals. We have bad energy policy, bad education policy, record spending, record inflation, record debt, and a government that has been weaponized against we the people, against the very people we represent. So we, we need to pass legislation to address all that. And I hope my Democrat colleagues will join me. I really do. But I have my doubts. And if they don't, and if Chuck Schumer says, no, we're not going to take up that legislation that we pass, and if Joe Biden won't sign it, so be it. They'll have to, they'll have to answer to the people in 2024. Second, second, we can never, ever let a bill like the one that passed 12 days ago, $1.7 trillion spent, we can never, ever let that kind of legislation pass again. We, We have, to, we have to pass a budget that makes sense, that's good common sense, then do the 12 appropriation bills that, that, are, that recognize it's the people's money, not ours, and send it to the Senate, and then stand firm on that legislation. And again, if they won't take it up, and Joe Biden won't sign it, we can stand firm on a CR or something. We can have that fight, but we are not going to have what took place a week and a half ago ever happen again. And then finally, third, and this is important. We got to do the oversight, well, the do House the investigations. We have to do the oversight and the investigations that need to be done. This idea that bureaucrats who never put their name on a ballot but think they run the country, who have assaulted our constituents' First Amendment liberties, they need to be held accountable. That has to happen. We need to do it. So that was Jim Jordan making an excellent speech. Now he did nominate Kevin McCarthy and he did get votes. I think he got like 20 votes. Um, I think today he had a meeting with McCarthy. He told people to not nominate him because he's standing behind McCarthy. Let's see your Speaker of the House. You know, this is catch up, all 60 posts. GOP in deadlock over House Speaker vote. Neither party could get enough. McCarthy said he's sitting down to talk to the others, but he remains confident he'll get the 218 votes. Not the way things are keep going. Um, you see the number of votes. We have 90% of the votes. You'll never see a body where 10% is going to control 90%. It just doesn't happen except under a republic. The minority still has a voice. But the part that really, really pisses me off. The part that really pisses me off. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see here. These are the House Republicans who voted against McCarthy for Speaker for the sixth ballot. 20 Republicans voted against Kevin McCarthy in the sixth round of voting for the House Speakership. These are the lawmakers who voted for Rep. Baron Donalds of Florida instead. Annie Briggs, Dan Bishop, Laura Barbot. Josh Beechin, Michael Cloud, Andrew Clyde, Ellie Crane, Biden Donalds. Um, that'd be funny if he voted for McCarthy. Matt Gates, Bob Good, Paul Grosher, Andy Harris, Anna Paula Luna, Mary Miller, Ralph Norman, Andy Oegas, Scott Perry, Matt Rosadell, Chip Roy, and Keith Self. And of course, Victoria Sparts of Indiana voted president for the third consecutive time, making the speakership threshold 217. Yeah, that's something weird that I didn't know. Is like if, they, if people vote president, it lowers the threshold, it lowers the majority. 
which doesn't make sense to me, but you know, it is DC math, so go with the what you say. But that's not the part that really pisses me off. What pisses me off is this this mofo here, the uh, diapers in chief, can't really speak. Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, number 46. Biden says, stand up on the house is embarrassing. No, kind of like embarrassing that your um, your son has pictures with hookers doing crack. Having fine, I don't know, I mean, you might want to look at the embarrassment in your family before for calling what's happening in the House of Representatives embarrassing. It is not embarrassing what's happening on the House floor. This is how our government is run. The issue is that we've been spoiled with two parties. And for the longest time, the two parties were lockstep. When the lead GOP wants to move left, everybody moves left. Whenever the Democratic, head Democratic member wants to move right, they all move right. So no, this is actually how our government is supposed to run. You're supposed to have discourse, you're supposed to have debate, and we put it to a vote. And you let the cards lay where they land. So it's not embarrassing. President Joe Biden weighed in on the ongoing standoff of the House floor as Republican failed to reach consensus and elect a Speaker of the House, saying it's embarrassing and what's worrying him the most is undermines the institution. Now we actually have a government agency acting like a government agency. We're having a body of the government acting like the body of the government for once. We're having discussion. We're having votes. We're having debates. And we also have the backroom deals that they're probably trying to secure the deal. For two reasons, it's embarrassing for the country. I mean, I'm literally not making it partisan. But the reality, it has to be able to have a Congress that can't function. is just embarrassing. No, this is day two. This is day two of the first session, which was neutered by the Ambias bus bill. Yeah, that's right. The House of Representatives has been neutered for about eight months, I think it's until September. Because of that bill, funds the government until September, which means any bill that deals with finances has to wait until September. That's embarrassing. You took the power away from the session for two years. So they got eight months out of the first year that they can't really do anything to fix out of control spending. That's even that's even more embarrassing. But the reality is yet to have a Congress that can't function, just embarrassing. The greatest country in the world, and how can that be? We have a lot of trouble with the tax on our institutions already, and that's just what worries me more than anything else. I don't know if inflation should worry you. Out of control crime should worry you. Um, our borders should definitely worry you, but you don't really care about the border. Um, you may go when you go to Mexico, I think either this week or next week. You might make a trip to the border. It's probably going to be a border that's not overran. Who knows? Maybe it is. Maybe you'll prove me wrong, and I'll be happy that you proved me wrong. But him to say that this is embarrassing... Your whole administration is embarrassing. What's the uh, nuclear waste reps, uh, person that you put in charge? That's stealing luggage whenever they go to the airport. They arrive to the airport with no luggage and leave with luggage. That's pretty embarrassing. You got your secretary of transportation. Who's not handling transportation. You have the Southwest fiasco, which probably... Falls on him. You go to the Virginian Islands. And the media doesn't call you out. And you have Ted Cruz rightfully calling you, you out. And the media out. Because he was chastised for going to Cancun. During Texas winter freezes. No, you sir, an embarrassment. I didn't vote for you. I voted for Donald Trump. And I don't think I'm going to vote for Donald Trump next time around. He has to uh, prove himself to me. So we'll see. We'll see what he has to say. I mean, be interesting to see who the Speaker of the House is. I still think it's going to be Kevin McCarthy at the end of the day. Well, maybe not the end of the day, but end of the votes, unless he decides to step down and give someone else the opportunity 
to lead the Republican Party in the House, which it looks like he probably should because he's not going to get the votes. I think these 20 are going to stand their ground. Unless you got people from the Democrats that's going to vote for them. Or you might have Republicans vote for the um, Democrat. But I do think when everything's said and done, we're going to see Kevin McCarthy, Speaker of the House. And that is when we're going to see what his true colors are. We can't really know what his true colors are. But there's also one interesting point. Pelosi says that she was told no swearing in members without a speaker. The former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi told reporters that she told was told today that it will be could not be a ceremony swearing in without a speaker. This morning, Pelosi has advocated for some sort of swearing in as family members and others are in Washington for the first day of Congress. We had to have a speaker in order to do that. Pelosi said we pr pursued that, and you said that you had to have an absolute speaker. I'm sorry, I, mean, I don't really care about Pelosi. I think she's corrupt. She's made probably millions robbing the middle class all for the sake of democracy while propping up terrorist states like Iran and China um, and lobbyists and unions. Same thing with Joe Biden. He's corrupt too. I'm pretty sure McCarthy is also corrupt. I don't really trust any of the uh, politicians. I mean, there's a few that stand out that I kind of trust a little bit more, but the level of trust I give to them is very low, very limited. Anyways, that is my video. I'm going on far too long. Anyways, leave a comment down below on who you think the next Speaker of the House will be. Would it be Kevin McCarthy? Or would he finally step down after the 20th loss? Or is he going to prevail or is it or the democrat is the democrat going to be speaker of the house let me know down low in the comments down below be interested to know your thoughts but with that have yourself a wonderful day morning or evening